Good evening and welcome to Grow to Grow Christian Center's Tuesday evening Bible study. My name is Assistant Pastor Herman Alexander Sr. And we, today we're going to be teaching on the topic that you don't hear from a lot of people. So what I want you to do is get your Bibles, your notebooks, your markers and your pens and get ready to take some good notes on this powerful message. This message is going to improve your prayer request from God, okay? Now I'm going to pray and then we're going to get started. Now, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to minister to these, your people. I thank you, Father, for revelation, knowledge, spiritual understanding, for spiritual growth and maturity that will take us all to the next level in life and in ministry in Jesus' name. Satan, I break your powers over the message, over the people. You cannot hinder them from receiving the words and the blessings of God. I bind every spirit of distraction, confusion, division, rebellion, rejection, false doctrine, false revelation, and every evil and wicked hindering spirit that would attempt to disrupt this message. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I loose you from your assignments over us, and, and I, uh, I bind you from your assignments over us, and I loose you into outer darkness, never to return again in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I decrease for your increase, all of you, none of me. I step back so you may step forward, manifesting yourself as the teacher, revealing revelation, knowledge, and spiritual understanding so that your people grow and become the better for it in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you, give you all the praise, honor, and glory for what you're about to accomplish and what will be revealed through the teaching of your word in Jesus' name. And the church says, amen and amen. All righty. Okay, once again, my name is Assistant Pastor Herman Alexander Sr., and we're going to be teaching on something very unique today. You don't hear a lot about this particular subject. I'm going to introduce it to you in a different way today. Okay, so what I want you to do is get your Bibles, your pens, your markers, and you get ready for the Word of God. Now, this has to do with something that you do quite often, but you may leave it out. Now, and it, it's relate to your prayer. When you're praying to God for something, when you're requesting or uh, petitioning God for something, say, for example, you're petitioning God for $1,000. You need $1,000. You go to God and you say, Father, you said in your word, Father, ask and you shall receive. You say, you have not because you ask not. Everyone that asks, receive. So, Father, I need $1,000. I receive it by faith. I believe I have it now in Jesus' name. Father, I just thank you. Thank you for my $1,000. I thank you, Father, for my $1,000. I believe I have it in Jesus' name. So every day you're supposed to confess that you believe you have your thousand dollars even before it manifests. So day by day you confess it. Throughout the day you confess it. And for some reason you begin to get a little discouraged because you don't see the manifestation of it. Because you, you did what, you, what the Word of God says. The Word of God says ask. You asked. And the Word of God says believe that you have it before you receive it because it's a faith transaction. You did that. And still you don't see anything. Well, what may have happened, you might have forgot the, one of the most important things that people don't understand about prayer. Even though God wants to meet your needs and he's your supplier, there's a faith process. And you have to go through the process and catch every detail of your prayer time. When you're doing that, then you'll get it. But what has been left out of many people's prayers, what, have, what has um, sometimes caused them to doubt that the prayer doesn't work or the word of God doesn't work is one thing that God has provided for us. And that's the use of angels. Angels is the messengers and the messengers or what has been left out a lot of times when you praying and asking God for something. So you would do it like this. Father, you sit in your word, ask and you shall receive. You have not because you ask not. So father, I'm asking for a thousand dollars. I receive it by faith. I believe I have it now in Jesus' name. I loose the angels in heaven to go forth and bring me my $1,000 in Jesus' name. Father, I just want to thank you and give you praise, honor, and glory for my $1,000. So now you have went through the process. You asked by faith. You asked in the name of Jesus. You receive it by faith. And you loose the angels to go forth and cause it to happen. And because of that, you will get your prayer answered. And there won't be no delay. When at first you had a delay because you didn't send the angels to go forth and cause it to happen. Now, what I want to do is give you the title of this message now. The title of the message is Angels, Heaven's FedEx System. Okay? Now, our foundation scripture will be in Hebrews chapter 1. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 1 and let's read verses 13 and 14. 
It says, verse 13 says, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation? So God has provided angels for you because you are the heirs of salvation. Now, we're going to look at what, who the heirs of salvation are so that you won't be mistaken because everybody's not an heir of salvation. Okay. Now, our second foundation scripture is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and read our second foundation scripture. We're going to drop down to verse 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There has no temptation, there has no temptation taken you, but such is as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation, that's the key, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So God makes a way for you to escape whatever temptation, whatever challenge, whatever situation that you are experiencing. But he says, with the temptation, he make a way for you to escape so that you're able to bear it. So therefore, the answer to your problem has been provided, but you must petition God for the answer to that particular problem. And if you don't petition him, then you won't get it because you are involved in the faith process. God wants to meet your need, but he needs your participation. Okay. So you have to petition for that thing that you're believing God for. And when you petition it, you must use the angels to go forth and get it. Now, every single prayer that you use doesn't require the use of angels, but I want to minister to you today about the ones that do require the use of angels so that your prayers won't be hindered. Okay. Now, now, uh, a golden objective. Well, the purpose of the message today is to give the believer a clear understanding of the existence of angels and the benefits that they are to the believer. Once again, the purpose is to give the believer a clear understanding of the existence of angels and the benefits that they are to the believer. Okay. Now, a golden objective we want to reach today is that the believer will know how and when to use and dispatch the angels of the Lord when praying, okay? I'll read that again. The believer will know how and when to use and dispatch the angels of the Lord when praying. Now, in our introduction, we want to turn to Psalms chapter, Psalms verse, I mean, wait a minute, Psalm chapter 103. Psalms chapter 103, and we're going to read verse 20. Psalms 103, we're going to read verse 20. We're going to see something here that's going to minister to you. Now, Psalms 103, verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. So we just said God just told us that the angels, they hearken to the voice of his word. That means somebody got to say something. So the angels do what God says, but they also do what you say. So we got to understand that the angels are there to be used. They are servants. Now, what I want to do is go through some explanation of what is an angel? What is an angel? Well, in the Bible... It's a Greek word. It pronounced ang ang angelus, angelus. And it means that, uh, or in the Greek is number 32 in the Greek. It means an angel is a messenger sent by God, by man, and get this, by Satan. So an angel is a messenger sent by God, by man, or by Satan. Now, as it relates to Satan, Satan will send false ministers and prophets to teach his false doctrine because the, the devil don't want you to get the word. He's not after your car, your house, your money. He's after you and that word. So he has to mix it up and change it so that you be confused and you don't follow God's way. 
He wants to introduce another way that looks like it's okay, sounds like it's okay, but it's not the gospel of Jesus. Amen. Now, secondly, an angel is a messenger which relates to a pastor. A pastor is an angel from God because he's a messenger bringing a message from God to you. So me being an assistant pastor, I'm an angel bringing a message to you from God. Okay. Next, an angel is a guardian or representative, a guardian or representative. Now, listen to this one. An angel is superior to man, belonging to heaven, belonging to God, and engage in his service. So the angels belong to God and they are engaged in the service. So God uses angels. But when Jesus died on the cross, part of our benefit package was that we had access to use angels, okay? So if you don't use them, you put the angels in the unemployment line. You pray to God, believe in God for something, and you forget to dispatch the angels, then you're holding up your own package. Same way if you go to Amazon, you go online, you send a packet, you order something, Amazon is going to deliver it. Well, there's a messenger that's going to be between you and Amazon. And that's the delivery man. He's going to bring it to your house. That's the manifestation of the thing that you're praying for. So you have to dispatch the angels so that your the, the thing that you're praying for will be manifested. Now, angels or spirits not having material bodies as men. So, once again, angels or spirits not having material bodies as men. So an angel is a supernatural being. Angels are either human in form or can assume the human form when necessary. Now, I know that's, that's kind of deep there, so we're going to give you scripture to back that up. So turn to Luke 24 and Acts chapter 10. Luke 24 and Acts chapter 10. In Luke 24, I want you to drop down to... Verses 3 and 4. Luke 24, verses 3 and 4. Verse 3 says, And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. The two men that were standing there were angels, but the Bible describes them as two men. So they didn't see them as this figure with wings that everybody talks about. They saw them as two men. But if you notice, they were two men glorious because they said stood by them in shining garments. Now, let's look at Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, and we want to drop down to verse, I believe it's verse 3. Acts chapter 10, verse 3 says, He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying to him, Cornelius. So let's start at back at verse 1. It said, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying to him. So the angel was bringing Cornelius a message, but he saw him. Okay. Now let's look at one more thing that an angel is called. First of all, an angel is called holy. He's called holy because he's of God. He's an angel of the Lord. And the Lord is holy, so his angel is also holy. Now, I have a definition that stood out when I was studying in this Christian dictionary and it described an angel. It said an angel, a spiritual and supernatural being who continually worships and serves God 
in heaven and who is sent into the world from time to time as his messenger to inform God's people and to comfort and minister to them. So therefore, God uses angels, but you also have access to angels. Now, I also looked it up in the Google, and Google says, angels are as spiritual beings intermediate between God and man. Just like when you order something from Amazon, the delivery man is intermediate between Amazon and you. So intermediate means coming between two things in time, in place, in order, or in character. Okay? Now, since we see that in our foundation scripture, Hebrews 1, 13 and 14 said that the, the heirs of salvation, the angels were for, for the heirs of salvation, we need to find out who are the heirs of salvation. So the heirs of salvation are those that are born again. So therefore, at the end of this message, if you're not born again, we'll give you an opportunity to get born again so that you will have access to the angels. Now, let's look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We want to validate this in Scripture so that we have an understanding. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So you see right there, we are the heirs. So Jesus is heir, so we are also. Now, let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. We're going to drop down to verse 26. It says, For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you has have, have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Once again, we get our confirmation that we are heirs. Okay, one more scripture. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Let's drop down to verse 12. Colossians chapter 1. It says, giving thanks to the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So therefore, we have been redeemed and we are the heirs. So therefore, we have access to the angels. Now, I'm going to show you some steps in your prayer when you're petitioning something from God. And if you follow these steps, you will get your prayer answered because you have done everything you need to do. And at the end of it, you just consistently confess because your confession brings possession of the thing that you've been praying for. OK, and it's not about time, because when you pray to God, faith is now. So if faith is now. Your clock doesn't mean anything. The time of the month doesn't mean anything. You have to believe you have it before it even manifests. OK, now. OK, completing your prayer request from God. This is steps in praying to God when petitioning for certain things or situations. First, step one, you find your situation in God's word. Because every concern known to man is in the word. Step two, put God in remembrance of his word. Like when I prayed for a thousand dollars, Father, you said in your word, ask and you shall receive. Okay, step three, pray to your heavenly father in the name of Jesus and not to Jesus. You do not pray to Jesus. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus is the access to the Father. So we say, Father, in the name of Jesus. If you start out with Jesus, Jesus already told us, in that day you shall ask me nothing. You ask the Father in my name and he will give it to you. Okay? Now, our fourth step is 
you end your prayer in Jesus' name. Once again, he's the author and finisher of your faith. So at the end of your prayer, in Jesus' name. Now, our fifth step is we loose the angels from heaven to go forth and cause our prayer to come to pass. Okay? Once again, we have to have that intermediate between God and man, which is the angels going forth to cause our prayer to come to pass. Now, step number six, begin to thank God for the answer before manifestation of the thing you pray for. You have to believe that you have it. And if you believe that you have it, then you can be happy about it because you did exactly what God told you to do in his word. You loose the angels in heaven and you believe you have it. So you start seeing yourself with that thing that you prayed for. Start seeing yourself with the answer before manifestation. Because remember, it's a faith process. Faith is asking and believing God for something that you need, want, and desire, but you don't have it in the natural yet. So you have to use faith to get it because faith is a lifestyle of the believer, okay? Now, step number seven, continue your, co your confession of faith until manifestation. Continue. Every day, I thank you, Father. I believe I have my $1,000 in Jesus' name. Start seeing it. It may come in the mail. It, somebody may walk up and give it to you, but you continue to confess and that's what causes it to come in, okay? Because the more you confess it, then your belief system will begin to grow. And then when that thing manifests, then you're, oh man, I did it right. Now you're on fire now. You can pray for anything else you want and need. Now, step number eight is something that I want you to do when you start praying. Is create a prayer journal and write down the day you prayed for it and check it off on the day of manifestation. Now you begin to recognize how long it takes for manifestation. If you were doing everything that you needed to do so that prayer could get answered. Because sometimes when it takes a long time, you begin to ease off of your confessions and start doing something else. But if you got that prayer journal and you're paying attention to it every day, every day will be your confessions. Every day your confession of faith. The Bible says continue in your confession. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is let's look at the benefits of having access to heaven's FedEx system. The benefits of having access to FedEx system. Now, we'll turn to Psalms 91. Psalms 91. And also turn to Psalm 34. Psalm 91 and Psalm 34. Gonna look at the benefits to having access to heaven's FedEx system. In Psalm 91, I want you to look at verse 11. It says, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. So it looked like the angels are gonna protect you. You have supernatural protection from the angels of the Lord, okay? And that's a great benefit because there'll be times when you're by yourself and you may be a little fearful, and it's okay. That's just the warning light from Holy Spirit that lets you know to be careful. But then right out of your mouth should be, I thank you, Father, the angels of the Lord encamped around about me on the north, south, east, and west, to and fro, whichever way I go. So no hurt or danger will come nigh me. No evil should befall me. No plague should come nigh my dwelling in Jesus' name. And that will encourage you to continue going where you're going. Now we said uh, Psalm 34, 7. Psalm 34 verse 7 says, The angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and delivers them. Now, when he says fear him, he's not talking about you being scared of God, but he's talking about reverencing and respecting God. Amen. So therefore, he's going to provide for you because you believe him, you trust him, and you respect him. Amen. That's your heavenly father. Now, the second benefit is the angels of the Lord, they carry out tasks on behalf of God. So let's look at Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. And we see a couple of situations. Acts chapter 5. Let's drop down to verse 16. Acts chapter 5, verse 16. It says, There came also a multitude out of the cities, round about Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Then the highest, excuse me, then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, 
which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with ind indignation. Now, they were mad because people were getting healed and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, go stand and speak in the temple to the, to the people all the words of this life. So God sent the angels. So God was using them to deliver his people so they could continue preaching the gospel of Jesus. Now let's look at Acts chapter 12. Look at another segment. Acts chapter 12. Let's drop down to verse 7. Verse 7 says, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in, in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Gird yourself and bind on your sandals. And so he did. And he says to him, Cast your garment about you and follow me. Look, at he's following the angel. And he went out and followed him and knew not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. So that once again, the angels are following and, and, and carrying out tasks for God, okay? Just like they carry out tasks for God, you have access to them because of what Jesus did on the cross. You have access to the angels to carry out tasks for you, but you got to use them. You got to speak to them. You got to release them, amen? You don't just wait. You have to speak it. Amen. And let's look at uh, Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. And in Daniel 10, we drop down. Let's drop down to verse uh, 9. It says, Yet heard I the voice of his word. And when I heard the voice of his words, then I was in a deep sleep on my face and my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which sent me up on my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for to you am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood trembling. Then said he to me, fear not, Daniel, for for the first day that you did set your heart to understand and to chasten yourself before the God, before God, your words were heard and I ain't come for your words. So you see, the angel came for his words. So that if you don't say anything, you put the angels in the unemployment line. They're waiting to serve you. They're messengers between God and man. But if you don't say anything, they sit there waiting, okay? And you have access to them, but you have to release them with your mouth. All righty. So the angels come on your behalf when you speak God's words in certain prayers, petitions, and situations where angels are needed. Now, say, for example, every time you pray, you don't need angels. For example, you're praying over your food. You don't need the angels then. Or Jesus told us in Luke 10, 19, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing by any means shall hurt you. No evil shall befall you. No plague shall come down your dwelling. So when you're casting out a devil, you don't need the angels then because you're using your power and authority that God had given, given you in that situation. But a lot of times I want you to focus on the times when you're petitioning God for something or when we're grouped up in intercession and together we're believing God for something. In intercession, we loose the angels to go forth and cause all our prayers to come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let's look at how do angels relate to the cross and sin? Well, first of all, when you're in sin, you can't use the angels because they're not going to respond to that. For example, say, for example, if you were if you were fornicating or committing adultery, you can't loose the angels to be encamped around about the hotel so your spouse don't come in and catch you in Jesus name. That's not going to work. OK, let's look at uh, the book of Isaiah. Oh, let me see. Isaiah. Isaiah. Where is Isaiah? Did you leave me? Oh, Isaiah. Uh, 
Where did Isaiah go? I know Isaiah is in there because the word doesn't change. Right. Right. Very strange. Okay, there Isaiah. Isaiah was hiding on me. It was stuck. Okay, where are we at now? Okay, let's once again, we're looking at Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah 59. Sorry about that. My pages were stuck. Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you that he will not hear. So you can't dispatch your angels of sin. So since we've been born again, we are delivered from that. So we're able to use that. So thank God for salvation. Thank you for redemption. And another scripture, just to back that up, John chapter 9. Look at John chapter 9. John chapter 9 verse 31 says, Now we know that God hears not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God, he does and does his will, him he hears. Now a sinner is a sinner, not because you committed a sin, but because you're not born again. That's what it is, okay? So therefore, if you're born again, you have access to angels and they will move on your behalf when you dispatch them. Amen. Now, after you're born again, you have access to God's angels. This is part of your salvation package. Amen. All right. Now, in, uh, let me see, the book of Hebrews, Yeah, Hebrews. Let's turn back to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. That's right, we put our ribbon in there. Kind of back in Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. It says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation? So we see God had provided angels to minister on your behalf because you are an heir of salvation. So therefore, you're without excuse. You know now, if you're born again, you're an heir of salvation, you have access to the angels. So when you pray, make sure you dispatch the angels to go forth and cause that prayer to come to pass. When you're petitioning God for something, even if it's something going on at work, loose the angels to go forth and minister to somebody. Say for example, you, you believe in God for a house. You know, loose the angels to go forth and minister to everybody involved, the lender, the inspector, everybody that's doing something for you. Loose the angels to go forth and minister, and the angels would turn their hearts to give you favor, okay? Now, let me see one more scripture in our, other, in our foundation scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We looked at it once again, but I want to point one more thing out to you. Uh, let me see. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, 10, 13 tells us there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So, therefore, when you're in certain situations and circumstances, God says he would never let you be in a negative situation without a positive result coming there. So, in other words, the Bible says, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life so that you and your seed may live. live. So, whenever there's a death-looking situation, God always has the life situation right there next to it, but you have to petition him for it. He's got the answer, but you don't automatically get it. You have to petition for it. Another way to get it, if you're not sure how to pray, 
is praying in tongues. That's the perfect form of praying. When you don't know what to say, pray in tongues. And another scripture, the Bible says, those that call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. So if you get in a rough situation, just call upon the name of Jesus and that will take care of your situation, okay? So once again, I wanna thank you for responding to, uh, thank you for the uh, responding to this Tuesday night Bible study, okay? And if this message has been a blessing to you, I want you to take a minute to receive Jesus because a lot of times people think they, they can pray anytime they want to, even if they're not saved. But God only hears if you are a sinner, if you haven't been born again yet, God doesn't hear your prayers except for the one salvation because that's the key that opens the door for your relationship with God. So repeat this prayer with me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus was raised from the dead, I would be saved. I believe in my heart and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the son of God. He died for my sins and he was raised from the dead for my justification. I receive him right now as my Lord and Savior in Jesus name. If you pray that prayer, we believe that you're born again. I want you to contact us down at the bottom of the screen, G2GCC. The number is 314-867-1894. And let us know that you prayed that prayer. And if you have any more questions, we'll be happy to answer those questions. And if this message has been a blessing to you, please don't hesitate to sow a seed. The Bible says, give and it shall be given. And those of you members, always remember to continue paying your tithes and offerings, sowing into the pot fund, because we're still growing. This coronavirus is not going to stop us, okay? We have the victory in Jesus' name. Now I want to say a benediction prayer over you guys. So, Heavenly Father, I just thank you and praise you for your word. Thank you, Father, once again, that your word was heard, it was rich, it was powerful, and it got to the point, Father. And everybody that heard your word, Father, ask that you pour your blessings into their lives, that today be the first day of the best days of their life in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for what you've done, things that you're doing, things that you're going to do in the lives of your people, so we're the better for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen and amen.